the first tzimtzum. Why, why do I refer to this first? Because there's actually a series of tzimtzum. And, and um, one thing you should know about the tzimtzum, the tzimtzum means it's literally translated as to contract. And um, originally the chazal, the sages actually use it in a seemingly quite opposite way. When they say that God was mitzamtzum, God limited his presence to a specific area and revealed himself above the wings of the Kruvim, between the wings of the Kruvim on the, on the Ark of the Covenant, meaning God is everywhere, yet he, he spoke, his presence was present and able to articulate itself, communicate with Moses from the, from the Ark of the Covenant. And that was originally what Chazal, when they described the idea of Tzimtzum Shechinaso, he, he limited his presence Ben between the staves of the of the uh, ark, the holy ark. In Hasidus and Kabbalah, there's a there's a similar yet different idea of the word Simpson, which is that the Orient Sof, the infinite light, would not allow for lesser existence to come about, to feel itself because it would be overwhelmed by the oneness of God. Kind of sometimes when you are with an overwhelming personality, there's no room for you. But obviously God is much more powerful than any overwhelming personality. But sometimes, for example, there are people I've met of, as a rabbi who have been students of a particular teacher who so overwhelmed them that they had not been able to kind of discover themselves until after their teacher passed away because all they were doing was receiving. They, they weren't yet in the capacity to give. Or another example is Einstein. People like to talk about Einstein. If Einstein's mind is working in the capacity of the way Einstein thinks, he couldn't be able to talk to a young child about his theories. But in fact, there was a New York Times article was in some newspaper recently about a young woman it was a little girl in a park who needed help with her homework, and there was an elderly gentleman who used to help her. It turned out to be Einstein. And Einstein eventually, she, the, the, she would bring the math work back to the teacher, and the teacher's like, who did this? And the next, she said, you better find out who this man is. And the next time she asked him, he gave her his name, Albert Einstein, the teacher went crazy, and, and they ended up inviting him to teach in that class. And he taught third graders the theory, the, I think he taught them the theory, theory of relativity. He taught them things that most adults can't understand. But obviously for Einstein to be able to do that, because he knew so much, he was able to condense it into a, a way that even young people could, could understand it. But obviously he was holding back a lot. So we use that kind of metaphor of a brilliant mind being able to communicate a brilliant idea to simple minds, to children, as the idea of the tzimtzum, of, of holding back. God is infinite. God's light is infinite. For us to exist, he had to withhold that light that wouldn't allow us to exist in its presence. Why? I'm going to ask you a really, like, like question, why this the, people give attribution of the, the idea of Simpson to the Ari, the Arizo of Isaac Luria. They also say there's a couple passages in the Zohar that are talking about it, but they're not clear. They're, they're some of the most cryptic passages in the Zohar, like Galif, Galifa, Batiru, Ilah. I'm not translating because nobody really knows what the translation is. They're like really difficult passages. Oh, that's really the 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 the, 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 the things going on that are kind of parallel to what we call the tzimtzum. Why is it that you see in Kabbalists up to the Ari that they don't mention tzimtzum? Why, why all of a sudden do we need a tzimtzum? I, I want to ask a big question. I learned something today from Lubavitcher Rebbe. I looked it up. I'm, I'm doing a, a class on Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. And I want to look up. I'm giving, giving this talk. I want to see what Hasidah says about 
Shammai and Hillel. And, what, and why is it that when Mashiach is going to come, the law will be like Shammai? I mean, I, I don't know if I want Mashiach as much. If we're going to have to be so strict. And one of the explanations is because Shammai was strict because to him, the world was a metzius of danger, of gvura, of judgment, and was threatening. So therefore you had to limit yourself from it. What's the problem with that? Because on a subtle level, it represents the potential for the idea of two jurisdictions. God as one and world as another, separated. That's why the fear. Can I ask you a very pointed question? Does Simpson lead to Shammai's theory? And or, Because the potential there is saying, before the Ari, although I learned the Ramban that kind of does discuss Simpson, the idea of Simpson I found first in the Ramban on the Pirish of Sefer Yitzir, but other than that, like nobody quotes him. It's probably lost just recently discovered is there something that before there was this teaching about Simpson that in a sense what is now becoming revealed by the seventh Lubavitcher Rebbe the idea that Atmos is Bipshitus that the, God's essence is very much present here that the Simpson in some way the idea of this concealment kind of created a Beishamai's view of the universe. There's God and the world. In fact, that was the machlokas, the debate between different schools of Kabbalists. We know it as the great debate between the Hasidim and the Misnagdim, the Vilna Gon and the students of the Baal Shem Tov, whether or not Simpson is literally God is not here, or God's light is not here, at least, or God's light is here on a literal level, but figuratively it's, so to speak, not felt. But, but be that as it may, the fact that there has to be a debate about it, were we not better off before the idea of the Simpson? What does Simpson add to our understanding of God in the world? Simpson. What, what is it? How does it help us connect to God? Simpson allowed the, the, the creation to happen. I mean, Simpson. Without the Simpson, there was no space. Not in the. Not in the, literally, and not in a, in a way of, of, of any dimension, any 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 consideration for for the chain of creation. But you're explaining it on a, on on a practical like why it had to be. No, so what, 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 what happened before that they didn't have the Simpson? What they had before was everything was infinite and there was no creation. So to to understand God, it was higher than understanding. When there was a creation, a chain of creation, and, uh, and uh, the creation received its qualities, intelligence, and other, other uh, <coughs> character traits, this is what enabled people to have some kind of understanding in godliness, in the uh, uh, existence of God, in the, in the essence of God to a certain extent, because they're able to see how he limited himself, and from there they understand that there's something higher, mm -hmm. because nothing happens on its own. So this is the logical derivation of how a person derives that there, there's this superpower, there's something higher than the regular, uh, the world that we see with its limitations. So on one hand, we needed the creation to recognize it. And in fact, in Kabbalah, it is mentioned that one of the reasons of the creation is to see the greatness of God. That it was the, uh, the, the, that the, the creation should re recognize and acknowledge his greatness. This is one of the reasons why the creation was created, the chain of creation in order that it should be acknowledged on the part of the creation. In addition to that, the creation was also created because there was a desire. There's a famous quote in the Medrash. In the anthology, it's mentioned that the God had a, des a desire for a dwelling place in this physical world. What did he find in this physical world and what did he see here? We have no idea. What did he want over here? So there's a famous word. Well, well, yeah, right. Rab Shneir Zalman of Liadi, the founder of Chabad, says he had a desire, and on a desire, there's no questions. So this is how it answers. Like he wants all the questions. Right, answers all the questions. You can't ask it. You had a desire. Person has a temptation. Later. So uh, later, um, later, 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 later. Take questions later. So, so getting back to Simpson. So you're saying that Simpson, um, two things happen. It allows us to exist. But let's say the Ramak, who was the contemporary of the Ari, he doesn't talk about Simpson. I, I looked for it, I couldn't find it. 
I'm not saying I read every. It's a, he has a very big. His main, his magnum opus is, is part of this room. It's a magnificent sefer, and I was zocha to learn, uh, you know, a nice a little chunk of it. And in the places where you would find where tzimtzum should be, there is no mention of tzimtzum. He has other kind of, I wouldn't say equivalent aspects that would fulfill the idea of the tzimtzum. He doesn't. Quite, but he doesn't have tzimtzum. There isn't a tzimtzum in his in his uh, terminology, uh, or any exact equivalent of it with some other words. Let me just add one more thing. Uh, in regards to recognizing the greatness of God, we needed limited creations in order that it should be expressed through them with the conditions that they're living in a world where they can, can exist. It's not an infinite revelation. There's an interesting phrase that it says, in Hebrew, it's uh, in, in, in Psalms, it's in chapter 48. Great and praised is the Almighty in the city of Elekeinu, of, of, the, of the Almighty city. So in Kabbalah, Hasidus, when Hasidus explains it, Hasidus says, there is two na- there is a f- seven names that are, are attributed to the Almighty. One of them is the four letter name, the Yud Kei Vav Kei. One of them is the Shem Elekim, it's the name which is shows the God that is the God of the whole creation. Siddhas explains that where is God al Hashem? Where do we see the greatness? When it goes through the channel of the name, which is Shem Alikim, that limits the creation. Because this is where they can appreciate and understand the greatness of Hashem. And, and in addition to that, this also is related, uh, uh, reflected also in the service to the Almighty. It says, Choik also li Alikim. When Yitzch, Isaac was born, it says, He made me a special pleasure, gave me a pleasure. So it says, what is this pleasure of Sheh Malikim? Sheh Malikim, that name refers to limitation. It's like the shield of the sun. David HaMelech, King David says in Psalms, The sun and its shield are the two names, Yud Kei Vav Kei and, the, and, and Sheh Malikim. So why is it that this joy comes... Uh, 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 directly and, and as a result of Shem Elikim. The answer is when there is Shem Elikim which blocks the revelation and a person works on their own and, exp- and a- accomplishes what they need to accomplish in the world Shreik, this is the biggest pleasure that's derived above and it's cherished because this is what a person worked through. He worked through the darkness, worked through the limitation, not seeing the whole infinite but on the other hand this is what brought about the, the, the special uh, pleasure in the higher world, the Almighty. Okay, so, um, so, so now you understand everything you need to know about the first uh, con- contraction, the concealment? So the purpose of the concealment, in a nutshell, is to reveal, to bring out uh, the real pleasure which is in, con- in, in, in the contraction, that a, that a person should work through the darkness and accomplish light at the end of the tunnel. So could you arguably say that there is an aspect of, because I want this to be the lead-in to the next topic, which is the Rishimo. Rishimo means the, it's, it's usually translated as the residue. How would you translate Rishimo? The remnants of, remnants. Yeah, of, uh, of the infinite light from before the Tzimtzum. In other words, there is a trace of the pre-contraction light still remains even in the metaphoric darkness of the light contracting itself. I mean, there's a lot of this. I think each of these subjects could be a sheer in and of itself.